Amazing. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening uh, for our registration preview session. I hope you are doing well and looking forward to getting some more information uh, when it comes to your next steps here at Carleton. Uh, my name is Caitlin. I'm the National Recruitment Officer here at Carleton, and I'm so excited uh, to be here with you this evening to get to help introduce you to the next phase uh, of your university journey, which is registration. Uh, I feel like I I can remember like it was yesterday when I was in your shoes, trying to make registration decisions, figuring out where to go, looking at the system and not really knowing where to knowing where to get started. And, and this will be a really great way for you to review a lot of helpful information uh, for you to prepare for what it is that comes next. Uh, while I'm here on the screen, we also have folks from our student registration assistance team here in the back end to help answer your questions, as well as folks from the undergraduate recruitment office to answer anything else that's on your mind. So if you do have questions while you're here this evening, uh, please do feel free, use the Q&A, let us know what's on your mind, uh, and we'll be happy to help answer those questions as we go. Before we jump into everything registration, uh, I like to do a few things just as we get started to help introduce you to what it is that comes next. Uh, the first is acknowledge where Carleton is located. Hopefully by now you know that we're in Ottawa and you're looking forward uh, to sticking around in Ottawa or coming to Ottawa very, very soon. Uh, but campus is also on traditional and unceded Algonquin territory. Something that's really important to who we are as an institution is recognizing the role that we have to play in working towards reconciliation, both as students, as staff, and as faculty. And it's a role that you'll get to play as well. It's a really good learning opportunity to see uh, not only the beautiful land that we get to learn on, but the opportunities that you have uh, to, to play your role and learn more. And I encourage you to take a look at what's happening at Carleton um, at carleton.ca slash indigenous. But I also like to give you a little bit more information now on how do you actually transition to Carleton, right? You're probably in the last phases of high school, of grade 12. Um, you've been in the same area for a long time, really looking forward to what comes next, but not necessarily knowing where to start. But we here at Carleton are here to support you through that transition. And we have a number of different programs to help you. One of those is our first year connections program, which is a mentorship program. It pairs you with an upper year student for the first six weeks of classes. You get to ask questions about academics, about personal life, about social life, about extracurriculars, and really have someone who's been through it before to help answer your questions. So uh, it's a really great personal connection and you can sign up to be paired up with a mentor today uh, at the website that's been posted in the chat. Another really great opportunity to learn about what comes next is CU 1001. This is a non-credit summer orientation program and it's done asynchronously online. So if you're interested in figuring out what comes next when it comes to academics, finances, campus life, wellness, employability, and more, uh, you can register for CU 1001. The online asynchronous modules will be available in early July uh, and they only take about two hours to complete and you can do them on your own schedule. Uh, they also get paired with CU 1001 experience days, which are in-person opportunities to come to campus for students who have completed those asynchronous modules. So if you're interested in figuring out what the transition looks like, what supports are available at Carleton, uh, and what this whole journey for you will look like, I really encourage you to register for CU 1001. This is a really great thing that you can do in between now and when you register for courses. So you'll go away from today with a few takeaways, uh, but a really great one is to register for CU 1001 uh, and look forward to taking part in those uh, online sessions starting in July. But that's lots of information from me uh, to get things started, but really what you're here for this evening is to learn a little bit more about registration, and that's great. Uh, you'll be hearing today from Olivia. She's a current student at Carleton and is the team lead of our student registration assistance team, uh, which means she is our resident registration expert. Uh, she's going to run you through lots of different pieces about the registration process and kind of introduce you to all of the steps. Um, so I encourage you, you can follow along if you're able to, um, 
um, through the systems as we go or to take notes. Uh, we'll be recording this session and making it available later on. Uh, so if you need to come back at any point, you'll be able to see this again, um, but really encourage you uh, to listen to all that Olivia has to share with you as we go through the registration process. So without further ado, I'm going to stop talking because I'm not your expert in this area. Uh, I'm going to hand things over to Olivia uh, to run you through the new student registration process. Over to you, Olivia. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Olivia. As Caitlin said, I am a student at Carleton. I like to give some background just so you know where I'm coming from. Um, I've worked with student registration for quite a few years. This will be my fourth year with them. Um, and I'm also a fourth year student. So I'm in criminology with a concentration in law um, and I'm just finishing up my degree about to move on to probably another one. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's just that's me. But uh, we'll be talking today about student registration, um, everything you need to know for building your timetable. So to start, we're just going to do a bit of an overview of what we'll be talking about today. Um, we're going to start with getting ready. So we'll talk about dates and deadlines, uh, registration tools, and we'll also talk a little bit more about university lingo and the types of terms you might encounter as you do your registration. So to begin, there's a few important dates to make note of, but the full list of dates and deadlines are on our website, uh, just is linked at the bottom there. but so as you may know, <laughs> May 25th has passed. Um, that was when the registration worksheet tool opened. So you are able to build your schedule now um, and our team also became available. June 28th to the 30th is when the first time tickets will begin to open for first year students. Um, we will talk more about time tickets in a little bit. Um, September 19th is the registration deadline. So it is the last day to add classes to your worksheet. Um, and register for them. And then September 30th is the last day to withdraw from classes and receive a financial readjustment. So that just means you would get your money back uh, for the courses that you would have removed from your registration. Some registration tools, these are just helpful resources that we like to direct students to, especially when you're coming in for your first year. Carlton 360, you might have heard of it. Um, because I know some students do apply through Carlton 360, but it is kind of a triage resource. So if you go on there, you can access your Carlton Central, your C-mail or Carlton email, um, and your Brightspace page where all your coursework will be posted once you are registered. Um, our registration occurs on Carlton Central. That's where we're going to do most of our presentation. Um, but you can access it through Carlton 360. The first year course selection guide is where you can go to see what courses will be required in your first year um, and some more information about your degree and your program. I find this resource extremely helpful. If you haven't already seen it, please go check it out. Um, and then the registration website. So any kind of dates and deadlines, um, our contact information is there, just some more helpful information. And it's good to always check it out and see what's, go what's going on and what might be new with the university. And then finally is our contact information for student registration assistance. If you have any questions following the presentation, you can always reach out to us there. Some more lingo. Um, these are more specific to registration. So prerequisite courses. Uh, these are just courses that must be completed before moving on to a following course. So for example, Psych 1001 is a prerequisite to Psych 1002. So you're building on your knowledge from that first course. That would be considered the prerequisite. A preclusion is a course when there is the content of one course becomes so similar to another one that you won't be able to earn credit for both of them. Um, this is common with a lot of first year seminar courses. As you can see, first year seminar 1004 is a preclusion for English 1100. Um, so you just wouldn't earn credit if you ended up taking both of these. We try to avoid preclusions as much as possible. Um, sections, courses have different sections. Essentially what that means is that uh, it's different times that the course is running at. It might have a different professor. 
Uh, it might have different types of assignments, but overall the content is very similar among sections. You can see an example here is Econ 1001, and we know what type of section it is by the letter. So this one is B, but you might also see section A, C, D. There's many different letters that might appear as a section. And then link components. So these are labs, discussion groups, tutorials, and other um, types of, they're kind of like side courses in a way. It's all with one course. Um, and we will talk about these more as well when we look at the search function on Carleton Central. But you can see this is labeled by the letter B, which matches our section for the lecture, but it's also associated with a number, for example, B04. Some more lingo, course load refers to the number of credits you would be taking in one term. Um, most students will register in 2.5 credits. This will keep you um, on track for your degree, but you can reduce that course load. A lot of students do take less than 2.5 credits. It's really up to you. Um, that rounds out to about five classes per semester because most courses at Carleton are worth half a credit, so 0.5 of a credit. Um, in one term is usually when the course would run if it's worth half a credit. And then we also have full session courses. These are running from September until April and they're worth 1.0 credit or 1.0 credits. Um, and they are essentially just a full year version of a single course. OK, so now we have some resources, the dates and deadlines. We got the lingo down. Um, we'll move on to planning the timetable and actually going through the steps of registration, what that will look like for you. Um, and I'll also talk a little more about some helpful information. So we do registration through Carleton Central. This is what the main menu of Carleton Central looks like. You have all these different tabs. Um, there's a lot going on here. Everything I will be talking about today is happening under that registration subheading. Um, and you can really fun, like everything we'll do, the whole registration process will happen under here. So I know when you first log in, it might be overwhelming, but just focus in on registration for now and we'll learn the rest of Carleton Central another time. Um, so we'll start by looking at getting started. And that's the first tab under registration. And this is the page it brings you to. Um, right now, if you were to go here, you won't see anything, but starting tomorrow, you will start to see your time ticket information, um, as well as your program, the class that you're with, so your year standing, all of that information will be held on this page. Um, a time ticket is the earliest time you're able to register for your courses, but it isn't the last time you can register because there is a separate registration deadline. Um, you will see here the time ticket will populate. They are released tomorrow, but that doesn't mean you will be able to register uh, tomorrow. You'll just know when you can register tomorrow. Also on this page, you'll see any holds that might be on your account. If you see three check marks, you're good to continue with your registration steps. So some more information. Um, First year seminars, you might encounter these as we go through the slides as well as in your own experience with registering. Um, first year seminars are essentially smaller courses and they're really great for transitioning from high school into university because you have a smaller group. You can interact more with your professor rather than being in a huge lecture hall. Um, it's a really great way to get introduced into university life and the type of content you'll be learning. Um, these are only open to Bachelor of Arts students, Bachelor of Cognitive Science, Communication and Media Studies, Economics, and Global International Studies. Um, so any students outside of those degrees are unfortunately unable to register in a first year seminar. You can take a maximum of 1.0 or 1.0 credits in a first year seminar course. So that could be one course worth 1.0 credit or two half credit courses in first year seminars. And most of them are full session courses or full year courses. They would run from September into April, but you can always double check that on Carleton Central as well. 
Uh, also for Bachelor of Arts students, so only students within the Bachelor of Arts have the breadth requirement. Um, if you're in computer science, you might have seen this word before. It is slightly different for you guys, so you can always check that out as well. Um, just doing a Google search or even giving us a call and we can go into it with you as well. But for Bachelor of Arts students, there is a breadth requirement which will help guide your elective selection. So in order to complete the breadth requirement, you must do three out of the four categories listed on here. So culture and communication is one category, science, engineering and design, social sciences and humanities. Within each of these categories, there's certain courses that fall into that realm. So for humanities, for example, um, you might have a humanities course. Uh, to complete one of the categories, you would just need to take one credit in courses that fall under that category. And you can find all that information on the website as well. It goes into a lot more detail than that. Um, so if that is something you're unaware of, definitely check out the website or give us a call afterwards and we can discuss it further. OK, so building the draft timetable. We've looked at getting started. We saw what our time ticket was. Um, but you want to move on to looking at the other tabs and seeing what actually building your schedule looks like. So the next tab you'll select on that page is build your timetable slash registration. Um, just a quick note, your registration time ticket is assigned tomorrow, so you'll be able to see it. Um, but it's the earliest time you'll register, not the last time, and it's all done through Carleton Central here and you are not registered for those courses on your worksheet until you actually proceed to registration. And I will show you what that looks like as well. Um, and also please know that you do need to build separate worksheets for each term and register each term separately. So building a worksheet for the fall and then going back and building another one for winter. And all of that we'll look at right now under build your timetable slash registration. So back on the main menu, that second tab under Carleton Central's registration subheading. And we'll start by searching for courses. So as soon as you click that option, you're brought to this page, select a term. We'll start with the fall 2023. Um, but like I said, eventually you will need to come back to this page to switch the term so we can look at building the schedule for winter 2023. <laughs> um, so you can just start with the fall and then hit proceed to search. If you are a student that does have block registration, it will also appear on this page as view worksheet and you can just hop over there and check that out. Um, but otherwise, if you aren't a student with block registration, you would just go proceed to search. When you're searching for courses, you have quite a few filters you can apply. Um, just keep in mind, the more filters we add, the more narrow our results are going to be. So I like to do a basic search when I'm just starting looking at courses. And what I mean by basic is I'm only applying three main filters. I'm going to do my course level, which will always be undergraduate for us for now. Um, the subject is referring to the subject of the course, not the subject of the program you're in. So. If I was a criminology student, but I wanted to take a law class because law is a required course for me, I would just do undergraduate law as my subject and then course number. So referencing the first year course selection guide, you'll see each course has a number associated with it and it's four digits long. And most of the first year courses are 1000 level. So in the course number, you can either put the number one and it will show you all of the first year courses within that subject that you have selected, or you can put the full four numbers, for example, 1001. Um, and then hitting search on that will give you all the results for those three filters, but you can add other filters like special criteria um, as well as managing unavailable time. So you can enter the times that maybe you're working or you simply cannot have a lecture going on during that time and your research results will accommodate those as well. So once we hit search, so you can see this person did a search for Econ 1001. Um, this is the results page. So everything that populates here is matching what you put for your filter. And you can see there's quite a bit going on. Um, on the left hand side, we have that white box and this is what we would use to check 
the course that we would like to take. So Econ 1001, that first block, under the column section, you can see there's the letter A, and we can also see under schedule that it's a lecture. Um, so that first block is a lecture, but that second block right under is a discussion group, and it is labeled as A01. Below that is A02, A03. So we can see this course has a lecture and a discussion group, and it also tells us we also have to register in the discussion group. So not every lecture has a discussion group or a lab or a tutorial, so a link component, but a lot of them do in the first year. So keep an eye out for that also register in blue link. Um, you'll also see on here the prerequisites column as well as the restrictions column. If it does say yes under that column, you can select any of the blue links on this page and it will bring you to the course details page where you can read more about the course itself but also what the prerequisites are and what the restrictions might be on a course. Um, and restrictions, I'll just briefly mention, are um, placed by the department offering the course and they refer to who is able to take the course. So for Econ 1001, we can see section A, yes, has a restriction. Um, and just as an example, that restriction might say Econ include under degree. So that would mean only econ students who are in the degree are able to register in this section. Um, and they might do that for your required courses as well. That's just to make sure that you do get into the mandatory courses you have to take and they reserve those seats for you. Um, if you do encounter these restrictions on a course that you want to take as an elective, you can try and look at the different sections because different sections sometimes have different restrictions on them. And then once you're ready to select your courses, you'll use that white box on the left and hit continue or proceed to worksheet. Continue to the worksheet. And here we are. So it'll start to list all the courses that you've been adding. Um, as you go through, you don't need to save the worksheet if you're still actively adding courses to it. You can just hit return to search and keep going. Um, but once you are ready to save that worksheet as it is with all your courses on it, you just have to give it a name. So I usually do like fall first choice, all one word um, and hit save as. And then I know that's my first option for the fall. That's my ideal schedule. Um, and when I'm ready to go and register, I can go back and find that worksheet. So this starts to populate as a list the courses that you've been adding but if you scroll down on this worksheet you'll actually see a visual representation of what you've been adding also on this page uh, are warnings so on the far right you'll see there are there's a warnings column if you have any warnings on your worksheet you'll want to click on it to see what the issue might be uh, oftentimes warnings will prevent registration there are a few exceptions uh, sometimes they're just reminders for students so they don't forget uh, about prerequisites maybe. Um, that's a good example. If you have a prerequisite in your fall semester and the following course in your winter, your winter will tell you that you're missing the prerequisite, but as soon as you register in that fall one, that prerequisite warning should go away and you should be able to register. So if we continue on, we'll see that the visual timetables, I personally prefer it a lot more. <laughs> it's much easier on the eyes um, and it just shows you visually what your day will look like. Also on this page, you'll see there is a number of weeks and you can do a drop down option. Right now it's at two. I would always put that to three just so you can get a better sense of what your semester will look like because that first week is always a little wonky because of the holiday. Um, also on this page, any course conflicts will appear. Um, they will look red, which means you will not be able to register in them. So if you do see any conflicts appearing here, they'll show as a warning as well as on here. You want to make sure you don't have conflicts because it will prevent registration. Um, so just making sure that you're checking for that. Um, but in the event you miss it, it's not the end of the world. We'll just have to go back and try and fix it again. When you're ready to register, um, you can go back and select that worksheet. So where we hit save as, right above it is the current worksheet. So this one right now says new worksheet. If you use the drop down option, it will change to give you the options of what you've created so far. 
and you can select from there and it will automatically bring up that old worksheet that you've been working on um, and you can help yourself when your time ticket does open and it's way less stressful. You have all your stuff ready to go um, and you just hit proceed to registration. I would also say building at least two worksheets per semester is a really good idea um, just so you have a sense of what you could register in in case a course fills up, especially those electives. So once we've retrieved that old worksheet, you want to confirm that the draft timetable is correct. You've selected the right one. Um, make sure that there are no conflicts and then you're ready to register. So on that same My Course Worksheet page, there is a registration subheading in that black box. You just hit proceed to register or proceed to registration. <laughs> so once we hit that big button, proceed to registration, you think you're done, but you're not until you hit submit. So just keep an eye on it. Just know that registration is not complete until you hit submit. Um, you'll see this page is the Adder Drop Classes page. We'll talk about it again in a moment, but what's happening here is you have all these little white boxes and they're getting automatically filled with the CRNs for a course that you have on your worksheet. The CRNs are unique to each course in each section. You don't need to memorize them. You don't have to worry about them. It's all automatically done if you're using the worksheet tool and when you're ready, you hit submit. And the page will automatically refresh and this is what you will see. So if your registration is successful for the courses you selected, you will see registered on the date and then the name of the course. Um, if there is an issue with your registration. So if you had a warning and you didn't catch it and you still tried to register in that course or um, if there's any kind of issue with the course, so conflicts, things like that, you'll, will, you'll get the registration add error and that's that ugly little yellow circle with the X in it. Um, it's always so frustrating to get the registration add errors, but don't panic. There's no need to worry. You'll just have to go back to that worksheet and see if there's a warning. And if there is, click on it to see what the issue might be. And then you'll know from there kind of what you're dealing with and what you need to go back and look at again. Um, you can always give us a call as well if you get an add error and we can look at that with you too. Um, and this page also tallies up the number of credits that you've registered in. So maximum hours is 2.5. So far, this person has 0.5 credits registered. Um, so if you aren't able to get into a course uh, because it's full, there might be a waitlist open for it. So not every course offers a waitlist, but quite a few do. Um, and on the waitlist, uh, you would essentially be waiting for a turn to register. And you'll see that populate on this add or drop classes page as well. When you go to register, you hit submit. All your courses register except one maybe, and you get this error and it tells you this course is full, but you may join the waitlist. Just using that action button, you can drop down and see uh, the option to waitlist, and then you just hit submit again, and those changes will appear on this page as well. Some important information about waitlisting. Um, you will need to monitor your CMail account, and I should have said that at the beginning, but if you haven't already, please make sure you have your CMail, so that's your Carlton email address set up. Any university communication will be sent to that email once you have activated it. Um, even if you don't activate it, I think you're kind of missing out on all those communications that are being sent, and the waitlisting emails is one of them. So when you join a waitlist, you're put in line, and you're waiting for a turn to register. And it's not guaranteed, not everybody gets the chance to register off the wait list, but if you do, you will receive an email from the university and it could be on a weekend, it could be on a holiday, uh, anytime you could get the email, it's automatic, and you have 24 hours from the time that email is sent to you to register onto the course. So off of the waitlist into the course and you would do that throughout our drop classes. If you missed that window, you would just need to rejoin the waitlist at the end of the line. So keeping an eye on your email is super important. If you do choose to look at the waitlisting option, you can also check your position on a waitlist under detailed schedule on the student timetable. 
The registration override request is another option if you do end up getting an error for a course that is mandatory for you to take. Um, registration override requests are a great option, but again, they are not guaranteed. So when you do go to add a course and there's an error, um, if you can find an alternative, you should definitely register in that alternative in the meantime uh, while you do your override request. The override request is also offered through Carleton Central, so the first step of doing the override request is attempting to register in the course. You won't be able to submit a form if you haven't even tried to register yet. You need to get that error and then move on to this form, which is under the registration subheading, um, and you just follow through with it. It's an online form. It takes two minutes to fill out. It goes to the department offering the course, and they will either grant you permission or deny you permission to take their course despite the warning you're receiving. These are just some disclaimers. Um, you'll see this when you go select the form on Carleton Central if you ever need to do one of these forms. Um, it takes three to five business days to process. It's processed directly by the department. Um, but if you have any more questions about the override request form, you should always contact us and we can walk you through it as well. This is just what it looks like. You essentially would select the course you're trying to do the override request for. Um, and then you can select a reason why you're submitting the request uh, and then also typing in some more information. Um, I will say I don't think many first year students end up using the registration override request form. It's a, a good tool for upper year students, but if your course, let's say, has a warning on it that says you need permission of the department, you would be using this form to get that permission. OK, and the other end of registration is dropping courses. <laughs> so um, this is always an option as long as you're doing it before the deadlines. After the deadlines, it no longer is an option. So again, referring to the dates and deadlines page is a really good resource to have. Um, but there are two different types of drops at Carleton. So you have your financial drop and then an academic drop. So the financial drop happens before the financial drop deadline. Um, and essentially, when you go to drop a course, on the outer drop classes page, also on Carleton Central under the registration subheading, you would switch it to drop financial or drop academic depending on what time of the year it is and if the deadlines have passed. So the financial drop just means that when you drop the course, you will get your money back if applicable, so a fee readjustment um, if applicable in your scenario. And then also um, the course won't show up on your transcript. So it will be as though you never registered in this course this financial drop deadline is active all summer, so if you are registering after your time ticket and then you need to go back and edit, you can do financial drops. Um, after the financial drop deadline, this dropping, of course, turns into an academic drop, so that just means you won't be eligible for the fee readjustment and um, the course will appear as WDN on your transcript. So WDN is just the notation for withdrawn and that will be your grade for the course. And then the last thing you'd want to do with your registration is check your account summary. So um, this is essentially what you would owe the university after you register your courses and then you're starting to look at the payment um, and how you would go about doing that. All of that is handled by Student Accounts Receivable Office on campus. Their contact is on the screen there. Um, but just for your convenience, the payment deadline for uh, our August 25th for fall fees and then for winter fees, it's November 25th. But again, you can ver verify that on the dates and deadlines page. Um, but a calcu calculated amount to pay under registration is a really great option just for a quick summary of what you owe the university. And finally, our contact information. So um, student registration assistance team, we have an amazing, 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 amazing staff this year, um, like most years. Um, it's we're open May 25th to September 19th, which is the deadline for registration. So the whole time you can register for courses, fall and winter, um, we are available because we come back in January as well. So our email, our phone number, in person, we are so lonely in Tory building. Please come visit us. 
Um, we have a drop in chat as well for international students. It's a great resource. Um, and then our website is there as well. So if you have any questions, please reach out to us. We are more than happy to help um, anything in this presentation. I remember being a first year student and just the stress of it all. You're trying to finish your high school exams. You're going to prom and now you have to figure out all of this information. So please reach out. We are here to help. Um, and I'll give it back to Caitlin so she can finish us off. And then if you guys do have any questions, please keep sending them. Awesome, thank you so much, Olivia. That was super helpful, right? There are so many steps to registration and hopefully this is giving you some insight as to what that process looks like now that you've seen it step by step through the process. Um, if you do have questions, uh, you can always contact the student registration assistance team and they can walk you through these pieces again, uh, as well a copy of this presentation uh, be made available, a video of this uh, on the admissions website if needed. Um, we are continuing to answer questions in the chat and I'll highlight a few of the questions that have come through. Um, so that uh, hopefully we can get a few of those uh, highlighted. If you're looking for what courses you have to take for your program, again, you want to take a look at your first year course selection guide. So if you go to the registration website, you can find your first year course selection guide, which will tell you specifically in your program, what are your required first year courses? Do first year seminars apply to you? All of the pieces that you need to know are in that guide. So take a look there. Uh, another popular question that's come through this evening is what is the difference between A and A1? Uh, when you're looking on the class search page, uh, you'll be able to see what the format of a class is. A is often your lecture and that may be A or B or C or D, um, but a singular letter is often the lecture portion of a course. If there are those linked components, things like labs, discussion groups, or tutorials, those are often the same letter followed by numbers, things like A1 or A2, uh, and those pieces need to be registered for together. Um, so it's good to know that if there are linked components, you'll need to register for both, and you'll see that when you're searching for courses in Carleton Central. Um, another big piece uh, a reminder that's come out this evening is that you should set up your Carlton email account. If you haven't already, that's your C-mail. It's accessible to you through Carlton 360 uh, where you were able to view your offer of admission, where you'll be doing your registration through Carlton Central. You can also access your Carlton email account. Uh, if you're having any issues or have questions about your Carlton email account, feel free to send us an email at admissions at carlton.ca and our team will get you connected with the right pieces. But you want to make sure that you're starting to check that email consistently so that you can hear about what's going on. Uh, some of you may have gotten a, a recent email about residence. If you're coming in the fall uh, and you have already accepted your offer of residence, that's great. Uh, if you've accepted your offer and paid your deposit, don't forget about your residence information form. We need that in soon. And if you had a guaranteed offer of residence uh, and have not accepted your offer yet, uh, we have extended the deadline uh, for you to accept that offer until June 30th. So if you weren't sure, but you've changed your mind and now you want to live in residence, you can still go ahead and accept that offer and pay your deposit. Uh, but you need to do that by the end of the month. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at admissions at carlton.ca.